بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایز ان آر لاسٹ فیو لیکچرز وی ہیو ریچ ٹو دا ویری سگنیفیکنٹ ٹاپک ان آر اسٹڈی آف دی کورس آف اسٹائلسٹکس دیٹ از دی تھیوری آف فور گراؤنڈنگ وین وی لک ایٹ دی تھیوری آف فور گراؤنڈنگ وی فائنڈ دیٹ دیر آر ٹو ڈفرینٹ ویز تھرو وچ دی رائٹرز کین فور گراؤنڈ اینی فیچر آف دیئر رائٹنگ اینڈ دیز فور گراؤنڈنگس کین بی اچیوڈ آئی دیر تھرو دا یوز آف ڈیویشن or through the use of parallelism. As we talked at length about the theory of foregrounding and looked at with great detail how foregrounding can be achieved. If it is achieved through deviation, then the writer would break rules. He would invent and renew the processes of communication and writing in order to refresh the sensation and feeling that a reader would derive from the writing. On the other hand, If a writer chooses to make use of something that would be presented as a foregrounded feature, he may make use of uh, parallelism. Parallelism, as the very word suggests, would be repetition or creation of symmetry, order, balance in the writing. So, first of all, we will have a look at a concept that lies within the theory of foregrounding, that is the concept of deviation. So in today's lecture, we will talk about what is deviation, how is it achieved, what are the functions that it performs in literary writing, and also what are the significant elements that deviation encompasses within it, which can be utilized as a, a function that uh, literature is supposed to produce and uh, regulate in the reader's mind. Now, firstly, the very idea of uh, foregrounding and how it encompasses within it a sub field or a sub concept that is of deviation as we know that foregrounding is bringing something to the forefront making an idea prominent and how an idea is made prominent in a writing is of course through certain techniques and devices employed by the writers in their writing that bring that object or thing in the forefront and the rest of the writing and concepts recede into the background. So today we will look how writers foreground parts of their literary writing and what effects do these foregrounded features produce and within the theory of foregrounding how the idea of deviation is embedded and is utilized or exploited by the writers. You can see that the theory of foregrounding is probably the most important theory within the field of stylistics. And when any analyst performs a stylistic analysis of a writing, either poetry or prose, he focuses on the theory of foregrounding. The focus of an analyst is on finding out what features are the foregrounded features in a text and how has that foregrounding been achieved if a writer has used parallelism or deviation to achieve foregrounding is the task of the analyst so in our analysis we will be looking at the foregrounded features and locating them within the text as uh, features which would be deviant or which would be the examples of deviations within the foregrounding and it is arguably the most important part of stylistic analysis of any text. So a stylistician or an analyst of stylistics cannot really perform a vigorous and scientific analysis of a text if he ignores the foregrounded features. As foregrounding is the umbrella terms which encompasses within it the idea of deviation and parallelism, locating the foregrounded features would in fact lead an analyst into finding out whether the foregrounded features are deviations or are the examples of parallelism. So let us see in detail what is the concept of deviation that is related to the theory of foregrounding. One way of producing foregrounding in a text is through linguistic deviation or a linguistic uh, innovation. A writer would reinvent, recreate, renew something 
which we as a reader might not be familiar with. Now this would be termed as deviant. Deviant means something that is breaking the rules, something that is out of ordinary, something that is irregular. So if we say that a writer is making use of deviation, we mean to say that the writer is breaking rules of writing. The conventional way of writing and communication is disrupted. You can understand it in terms uh, that uh, the concept of poetic license reveals a very trivial sort of a deviation where a writer takes liberty of uh, his uh, position as a poet and would make use of maybe grammatical mistakes which might be termed as mistakes conventionally but which would be uh, innovations of uh, his style of writing if he makes use of such grammatical errors within a text in poetry. But deviation is something more than what can be termed as uh, an error or a linguistic abnormality because deviation is always deliberate. It is always intentional. The writer's focus is on making the text appear strange, unusual, different and captivating. If a writer focuses on making his text unusual and captivating for the reader, he with deliberate effort makes use of deviation. We say that another way is to reduce extra linguistic regularity or patterning. Now, if a writer is not deviating, another option available to him to create foregrounding is to stick to the rules, to follow the rules quite religiously. So, most common way of introducing this extra patterning is by repeating linguistic structures. So, if you contrast the concept of deviation, that is rule breaking, that is violating the rules. On the other hand, the counterpart is parallelism where the writer would stick to the rules or create extra regularity. Now this enforced and extra regularity would be something opposite to deviation because it is creating patterning whereas deviation is breaking the patterns and established conventions. So if a writer uses patterning and regularity by repeating linguistic structures more often than we usually expect and uh, he makes certain parts of his writing parallel. We have seen that happening in the poetry because in poetry writers create parallelism through the use of uh, sound devices or even devices that would be of meter and rhyme. Now such devices which are producing uh, similarity in sounds like assonance, alliteration, consonance, sibilance or even the end rhyme or the internal rhyme these concepts reveal to us that it is parallelism, it is sticking to the rules, it is extra regularity and patterning that is done through repetition by keeping the things in balance, by keeping the things same and similar and repeating what has been used earlier is in fact parallelism which is something that stands apart from deviation because deviation is rule breaking. So for example if you look at the last three sentences of the previous paragraph you should feel that they are parallel to one another and they have the same overall grammatical structure. Now here you see parallelism. If I in my writing stick to a, si a single uh, tense form that is present indefinite tense then I'm creating a grammatical parallelism because I'm making use of the same form of a tense. I do not shift to either the past or the future or uh, I do not uh, change into ing form as well. So if the verb form remains the same, that is a very trivial sort of example of a grammatical parallelism because as a writer I have uh, tried to stick myself to the same pattern and I have repeated the same in the multiple lines. So the same can happen in poetry writers use this pattern of repetition of the sounds, repetition of the verbs, repetition of uh, the graphological uh, way in which they represent their words and letters. So if parallelism operates on a more superficial level, we have seen that parallelism would deal with only repetition, patterning, regularity and similarity. And this similarity, patterning and regularity will mostly operate at the level of sound 
appearance and the structure of the work. It would not be that much connected with the meaning whereas deviation which is the m most important uh, term within foregrounding deviation deals with creating irregularity and also it deals with meaning because deviation disrupts not just the presentation or the surface of the text unlike parallelism deviation also operates at the level of meaning because the meaning too would appear to be unbelievable unusual and irregular which you would not like to uh, believe in but of course the interpretation would leave uh, leads us to the understanding that this deviation has a meaning this deviation has a sense so the concepts found within foregrounding that of deviation and parallelism operate on two different levels as I've said earlier too that parallelism operates at the level of structure surface sound and uh, appearance of the text whereas deviation operates at the level of the meaning it deals with the subject matter it deals with the theme it deals with the ideas so if deviation deals with ideas then it is important that we interpret each deviant features so every deviation demands interpretation understanding comprehension in order to understand a deviation we have to make use of our previous knowledge and also we have to make connections of the words and ideas within the poem that would elaborate the deviant phenomena within the poem now that is just for your understanding that how the concept of deviation and the concept of parallelism are embedded within the theory of foregrounding if a writer has to bring something to the foreground in the text or make something appear prominent and uh, unusual he can either make use of parallelism regularity or deviation or irregularity that is uh, you know as simple as this uh, and as you can see over uh, here as well that linguistic deviation and linguistic parallelism produce the effect of foregrounding so foregrounding if it is to be produced and created in a text the writer would either choose deviation or use of parallelism for it so now these two concepts are what we would be learning about with the help of examples from poems and with the help of our uh, understanding of uh, what functions these uh, concepts perform and what is it, its effect on the reader and what are the intentions of the author when they use these concepts so our discussion onwards would deal with understanding of the first concept today that is the idea of deviation and as we know that the concept of deviation comes under foregrounding theory that is why we say that foregrounding can be achieved through deviation deviation as a phenomena or as a technique for writers occurs when we have a set of rules or expectations which are broken as the very word deviation suggests that it encompasses within it the word deviant deviant means something that is irregular something that is uh, going uh, wayward or strange so when rules expectations are broken in some way that would of course be a linguistic way because the writer is deviating or uh, violating the rule through language you can understand the concept with many other uh, features too that you can find irregularity or deviation even in certain other things maybe dress code for example if there is a particular dress code in your university and uh, some of the students do not follow that you say that they are deviating from the norms because all the rest of the students are wearing a particular colored uniform where and others are not following it so you term this behavior this action or this uh, appearance of the students as deviant because they stand out as different breaking the rule of the university in their appearance similarly if in writing the words the language the expressions the structure 
if they are not used in a way which is authentic way or uh, the correct way grammatically as well as uh, uh, socially you would term such expressions as deviant so deviation in literature as we refer to it as linguistic deviation is linguistic because it deals with language if you're breaking the rules of language and expression you term it as linguistic deviation like the way this font has just changed observe in this paragraph that you can see on the screen in front of you that the second line of this sentence is italicized now don't you find that this is irregular the regular pattern of uh, the typing has been broken by the inclusion of uh, an italicized sentence now this font change makes us feel that something is strange something is different unusual and something doesn't match with the background or the context so this deviation from expected norms or this deviation from expectation produces the effect of foregrounding now within this paragraph if you focus on it you find that the second sentence seems to become prominent to you it catches your attention because it is italicized so it becomes prominent and comes to the foreground and the rest of the regular writing of uh, the first and the last sentence recedes to the background now look at it from the uh, perspective as if you are observing a painting because deviation and foregrounding have been adopted from art criticism so let us look at how art also foregrounds things and how adopting the ideas of uh, the expressive art that is the visual art in painting literature also presents something visually now here the text becomes visual because you see the font italicized becoming prominent in the regular font of the whole text for example if you observe a painting of uh, maybe a portrait uh, if there is a painted portrait in front of you that shows the face of uh, a woman who has many features that are prominent her eyes her hair her nose her lips anything that is there uh, in the portrait attracts your attention but maybe something more prominent would catch your attention for example if there is a teardrop that the painter has captured along with the face of the woman that he has painted and your attention is caught by that teardrop because the rest of the picture is regular it doesn't seem to deviate from what you see uh, through eyes in every person the same features that you have and some other person too might have but that teardrop catches your attention because it seems to reveal to you the feeling the emotion of the person who has been painted now that tear falling from the eye and that has been painted on the face in the picture or the portrait of a woman would become the foregrounded feature in lit in uh, visual art rest of the features of the woman her face her beauty and the rest of the you know uh, features would recede to the background same happens in a poem the way we discussed uh, in detail dunn's poem valediction forbidding mourning where he makes use of uh, the analogy of a compass the conceit of a compass now that conceit of a compass comes to the foreground just the way in a portrait we see in the example that the teardrop of a woman comes to the foreground and the rest of the features recede into the background so this is what deviation does we might encounter something regular but within that regular pattern the writer m must have embedded or highlighted something that should be foregrounded that should be highlighted and his intention is to make the reader focus his attention on that detail which he has intended to be the foregrounded feature so we say that what type of effect does deviation produce deviation from the expectation of the normal pattern the effect would be of foregrounding if something is deviant that would catch your attention that would make you stop think focus interpret and see why is it so hence 
it becomes foregrounded. If a writer violates, he makes you focus on that violation. And when you focus on that violation, you find that this feature becomes a foregrounded feature. So this is what is the connection of uh, deviation and foregrounding. When a writer deviates, he foregrounds a feature in a literary text. And that is always a linguistic deviation because it is done through the artful use of language, through a creative use of language. So writers make use of language creatively, breaking rules or uh, violating the norms in order to make their writing appear significant, unusual, attractive, aesthetically pleasing. And also, they are motivated by the very desire that they should make the reader active. Because if we receive things in the text the way we receive them regularly in life, we may not be able to find pleasure. Because literary writing is done for the sake of aesthetic pleasure that a reader derives from reading. So that aesthetic pleasure or the sensation of uh, the pleasure must be prolonged. And when the process of comprehension is made complicated through the use of deviation that aesthetic pleasure is prolonged so these are the reasons why the writers make use of deviations they do not really wish that the reader should never judge what they wish to communicate by making things complicated but they wish readers to stop think focus and then move forward with a better and a comprehensive understanding of something that apparently appeared to be strange and unbelievable. And at a more closer level, the reader would feel that the deviation is sensible. It makes sense, it is meaningful, and it is more deeper than the appearance of the text. In most of the instances in literature, deviation is linguistic. It means that it is the artful use of language it is a violation in the creation and making of an expression in language, either grammatically, semantically, graphologically, or maybe in terms of uh, its uh, semantic makeup, that it would reveal a deviant way of expression. But foregrounding is a psychological phenomena as well. So it's not just something that is surface reality or that is uh, deviant in appearance. It is also a psychological phenomena. Now, what, what is uh, meant by deviation being a psychological phenomena? It means that the linguistic deviation or the abnormal structures are to be interpreted by the reader according to his comprehension. Because the reader interprets it at the level of his understanding, his previous experiences, his state of mind, his feelings, likes, dislikes, and even his state of mind. So if a reader connects with the text, a foregrounded feature might subtly re reveal to him such aspects which he might not have been able to express himself in his life or find himself in things that he sees around. So it is psychological as well because the writer has given prominence to some thought through a deviant verbal expression because words are always thoughts so if a thought is to be given a cover or uh, a representation uh, through words those words if they are deviant they would make the reader connect with the writer at that level where he has formed that abnormal curious and unusual expression so this is how deviation also becomes psychological because it deals with the feelings and emotions of the author and then it operates at the level how well a reader is able to connect with that feeling or emotion which reveals the deviant idea or concept conceived by the writer. This is why the linguistic structure of text can affect meaning and effect as well. So the deviation is psychological because it, it appears in the pattern and then if a writer has composed a text in a particular way it will have a psychological effect on the reader too for example what is more important what is more significant 
For example, look at the psychological effect in this way that if a writer capitalizes some words in the text, he is giving prominence, importance and respect to those ideas. Now psychologically, when the reader uh, encounters those lines where there are particular words which are capitalized, now reader would pick those capital words first as they would stand out in the text and those texts would have more uh, kind of uh, comprehensive uh, impression on the reader and the reader would focus on those deviant and uh, capitalized words first and then the rest of the words would recede to the background. Now psychologically the reader has been tempted by the large font or the capital letters that the writer has employed for the sake of making the text deviant. So in this way the reader's attention has been diverted from all the text and has been brought to focus that is the capital words or capital letters in the text. So we say that linguistic phenomena can have related uh, psychological effects for readers of the text. The readers might begin to associate, believe in whatever the idea the writer has presented. They might ignore what the writer did not want them to focus on. So in this way we see that the writer through deviation is manipulating or steering the way he wishes the reader to navigate through the text. So if a text is a territory where we as a reader enter, we are free but it is the deviation, it is the foregrounded features within deviation that regulate our process of comprehension. That is they help us in uh, navigating through the text that is of course done for the sake of arriving at a meaning and understanding of the text and of course along with understanding of the meaning we are deriving pleasure we are appreciating the uh, mastery of the author as well so that is how deviation is also a psychological concept too because it makes the reader behave and interpret the text the way the writer intended to so in that way we can say that the writers influence over the reader is possible through these devices that he's making use of. Foregrounding and deviation and parallelism are such devices that affect the reader psychologically, steering their uh, process or their uh, move through the text, navigating through the text and finding meaning and even way out from the text. Understanding of deviation would become more clear if we analyze an example of deviation and I have chosen a very uh, obvious one for you that we have been discussing in the uh, concept of foregrounding as well that is Dylan Thomas's poem, the very title of the poem that is A Grief Ago. Now this phrase has been used in the poem as well and it is what uh, encompasses the very idea of the whole poem and this becomes the title of the poem as well. So Dylan Thomas in his poem has made use of uh, a phrase that becomes the title of the poem as is used within the poem as well that is doubly foregrounded because it is grammatically as well as semantically deviant. At the same time we see two forms of deviations within this expression that is a grief ago. So as a reader when we encounter this phrase or expression a grief ago we ask how exactly is a grief ago deviant. For example we as a reader have been trained to receive structures in English language grammatically in a particular way. Here we see a violation that time has been measured with grief instead of some regular measures like year, day, month, week. Now deviation becomes clear 
when we measure it against the regular pattern, the correct pattern. The correct pattern would have been a year ago and the deviant pattern is a grief ago. Now are we as a reader of literature to dismiss this statement as incorrect, nonsensical or meaningless? Of course not because this is foregrounded feature of a text. This is done by the use of deviation by Dylan Thomas. When he makes use of an expression that we notice we stop and think and we try to measure it against the regular pattern that why not a year ago, why a grief ago? What can you infer about the meaning of the phrase from the character of deviation is the next thing. Now if you recognize that grief ago is a deviation. Why is it deviation? Because you are measuring it against a regular pattern that is a year ago. So now you realize that it is irregular because it broke the rules of grammar or expression. Now the second step is to locate within it its meaning. If it is deviant and it has captured your attention as a reader, it has become foregrounded feature of the text, then it means that there might be a meaning that is to be reached at and to reach to that meaning a reader has to observe what are the reasons that have made the poet focus on such a deviation. So we make inferences about the authenticity, about the creativity, about the uh, aptness of this expression which would reveal the meaning of the phrase and it would be what deviation would be rendered significant. So the purpose of deviation is to break a rule and then to make the reader understand how the breaking of the rule was necessary. How the breaking of the rule is something that cannot be ignored. Now if the writer does not want the reader to jump or to quickly move away, if the writer wants the reader to stop, get a bit confused and then resolve that confusion, this is what is the purpose of deviation. Because we are studying the very fact that why a writer would deviate. If there are correct ways or regular ways of expression, why on earth would they look forward to creating something aberrant, unusual, nonsensical, strange and unfamiliar for the reader. As we see that deviation would make understanding complex. It would prolong the process of communication and understanding and comprehension. And then the feeling at the end on part of the reader would be of a sort of achievement that he found in apparently unusual and incorrect expression something deeper, meaningful and more uh, profound. So Dylan Thomas's expression a grief ago presents to us maybe as a reader we feel that since the person or the persona has been in a feeling of sadness or uh, gloom time became kind of you know uh, useless to him. He did not measure his life in terms of years, days, months but he measures it with grief. That there had been so much moments that were full of grief for his life that now he measures it not with the minutes or passing of the days but with the number of pains that he receives in life. So a grief ago makes sense at the level of feeling, emotions expressed by the author in the poem. Now observe this second example. That is uh, a bit uh, unusual, very deviant and strange example of deviation. That is in the form of anagram. As anagrams are the words which contain multiple words. Now he states that in the very title of the poem, George Herbert in the poem Temple makes the title of the poem that reveals deviation. Anagram is a word we know 
that reveals that how within a word there might be many words. Look at this, that he creates it with the hyphen and making use of parentheses as well. The very name Mary. Mary is the name of the girl about whom the poem is. And then within Mary, he, th he feels lies another word that is written at the bottom of the word Mary, that is army. If you shuffle the words in the word Mary, you can also make another word out of it that would be army. And then to reveal that Mary contains within it the word army, he wants to convey to the reader that it's an anagram. So Anna, Mary, Graham and then army is what the title becomes. Whereas the title itself is Mary because Mary is referred to as army or something that is more uh, like a force. So here you use a very strange and uh, interesting use of deviation by the writer using hyphen, using parenthesis, making use of a name as well as splitting the word anagram into two by creating a balance visually as well. So if you look at it visually you see that Mary and Army are in the balance. They are both in parenthesis but Anna with hyphen and Graham at the end and at the beginning seem to create a balance in the expression that is the title of the poem. Now it reveals everything about the poem. The very title that is deviant. That the poem is about Mary, a woman or a girl and within her name he has found the presence of the word army. How it will be revealed in the poem that why does he associate Mary with army he would reveal in the poem if you read that. But as far as the example of deviation is concerned even the only, only the title is enough to reveal that how mm, different ways exist for the writers to make use of deviation and one such way is through graphology. Here you, you, you see graphological deviation, splitting of a word anagram into two and it intervened by the word Mary which is in parenthesis and then the word army that is created from the very word Mary is given at the bottom. So how well her name and army does present in whom the Lord of hosts did pitch his tent. So that idea that a woman represents an army is embedded within the title that is a bit interesting, a bit humorous too and it makes us feel curious too because deviation's purpose is to arouse the curiosity of the readers because when we observe this title we feel we have a feeling that there is something wrong it's not regular, what is it? Anna? Anna Mary? Anna Mary Graham? Is it the name of the person? Then you see that no, Anna Mary Graham is not the name, rather Mary is the name and Mary and Army are the words which you can make from the same letters. And then Mary and Army have been uh, aided by the word anagram. So he says that it's an anagram. So now that is how you can find deviation either in uh, the literary writing, even advertisement, in the jokes, in the speeches. There are many you know, ways that you can locate such uh, deviations or rule breaking in the text, speech and writing. If you observe with uh, you know, um, great care the expressions of literature as well as ordinary speech and writing. Now one thing that is now quite uh, obvious is that linguistic deviation is a disruption of normal process of communication. Now look at this uh, that uh, description Anna Mary Graham Army. Now isn't it a disruption in the normal process of communication? You are unable to decide whether it's Mary, it's anagram or it's army because all three words are separated or split. Then when we say that in the description of deviation the first and foremost thing is that it would disrupt the normal process of communication. You expect the title of the poem to be plain, maybe army, maybe Mary, maybe anagram but not all three and not even all three jumbled up together that would make your understanding confusing. So it leaves a gap. When you encounter such a title you feel what is the point in writers communicating such a thing to the reader as it were in one's comprehension of the text. 
So the gap can be filled, the deviation can be rendered significant. How is it possible? Of course, through interpretation. The reader is expected to interpret what is the most suitable justification of a deviation. Because one thing is clear, that deviation is not accidental. It is deliberate, it is meaningful and it is again strange and complicated which would not be clear in a single reading. So when you read through the poem you find out the writer's intentions, the reasons and then the place and meaning of such deviation within the text. But only if by an effort of imagination the reader forces himself to connect the pieces and parts of the deviation and the rest of the text he may be able to make some connection at a deeper level. So only if through an effort and through a focus on the words and expressions and the use of imagination the reader perceives some deeper connection which compensates for the superficial oddity. Now superficial oddity is what you encounter as a reader in the first instance. Oddity was that you termed it as incorrect. That what is it? It is maybe just uh, the way you are composing a poem and you are not coming up with a suitable title. That is why the final title would have been uh, any one of these three, either Anagram, Army or Mary. But why all three are amalgamated? Why all three are present there in the title? So your superficial thinking about the poem's title that was deviant in the last example that we have seen would make you ponder because it is deviation you cannot understand it without exploring it further so in case of a metaphor uh, this compensation is in the form of an analogy now let us look at the example of uh, analogy where uh, it is a metaphor that is being uh, used and the metaphor used by the writer makes uh, this expression deviant because we are not usually acquainted with these expressions which would be associated either with something uh, that is non-limbing or uh, inanimate either giving life to something that is a non-living thing so those would be deviations so if you say that the earth is breathing the sky is crying it seems obviously deviant expression because you know the sky is not a human being it cannot cry you know that the earth is not a human being it cannot breathe so if you say the wind is furious metaphorically speaking you are referring to the wrath the you know uh, anger that is revealed through the force of the wind so you say the wind, wind is angry but in terms of uh, expression in terms of uh, communication you feel that these expressions are deviations or violations you can associate these attributes of anger, breathing and crying to a human being but not to a non-living thing. Now with the same idea observe this example that is the example of deviation with the help of metaphor. Now this line then thy sick taper will begin to wink. It's taken from a poem it says that sick taper will begin to wink. Now taper is the candle and winking is something we associate with the uh, beating of the eyelid. So if you're moving your eyelids, it is winking. But can a taper wink? Not really. A candle is not an eye. A candle is not a human or an animal that would taper, the, uh, that would wink or uh, would have uh, the ability to, uh, you know, move the eyes. So we find it a deviation that how can a candle become sick at the same time and would have the capacity or ability of winking now these two associations that has been that have been made by the writer with the candle appear deviant strange unusual and unbelievable here we see that the, this expression thy sick taper will begin to wink contains two violations of literal meaningfulness literally you dismiss the idea that a candle can be sick 
a candle is not a human or animal how can it be sick and then how can a candle wink it doesn't have eyes like a human being so these two violations make us feel that there is something worth noticing there is something worth paying attention to so when we point out this expression in the poem as deviant we try to figure out why the writer has given candle the quality or the attribute of a human he says that the candle is sick that it means that the eyes are referred to as a candle that is sick that is dying that is going to be closed or finished very soon the idea of taper being sick and the idea of taper being able of winking this is where the violation lies this is where the deviation lies we as a reader appreciate the analogy or the comparison made between someone who is ill and the candle that is burning out so somebody who is ill is seen to be you know reaching to death just the way a candle would come to an end through constant burning then flickering of the candle and the beating of an eyelid just the way the candle flickers with the wind or its flame sometimes moves it is seen as the beating of the eye or the winking of the eye that is again the idea that reveals that something is coming to uh, stand still sleep or death so the flickering of the candle and the beating of the eye are compared then the candle burning out and the life running out these are the things which are compared so these two comparisons give animacy or associate the idea of uh, a living thing to a non living thing that is what we as a reader term as a deviation so we can ask how these comparisons contribute to the total effectiveness of the poem so thy sick taper will begin to wink maybe some person who is dying who is ill and whose eyes are compared to a candle and the candle is the eye that is winking that is getting uh, quite closer to its end so this analogy makes us feel that how deviation is meaningful how deviation is interesting unusual and how it is packed with the meaning which the whole poem hinges upon a single idea that is strange and unusual is what the writer's achievement is that he has made you analyze it give meaning to it and then comprehend it as something that is possible that is sensible and meaningful to apart from deviations there are quite serious and uh, artful like uh, use of metaphors euphemisms puns analogies the way we have seen in the examples like grief ago as well as in this sick taper we find deviation can also be done in a way that can be it can be more comical humorous too that can be a bit uh, you can say ordinary or uh, less literary so another kind of deviation can be illustrated in bizarre word blends neologisms and uh, the creative use of uh, creation of a word word blending coinage or neologisms neologisms uh, a word coinage that might be done with the help of an existing word or by manipulating it or by uh, changing it or adding something to it so look at these three examples that i have been taken from the famous novelist james joyce's work finnegan's wake now james joyce in finnegan's wake makes use of these words which are musy room holborough and grace hopper now on reading these three words in the text one gets surprised because one does not find these words in dictionary one hasn't encountered these unusual words in life earlier and in writing as well 
we are aware of museum or music room but not music room we are aware of wheelbarrow but not whole barrow we know what a grasshopper is but not grace hopper now on encountering these three words music room whole barrow and grace hopper something that strikes our mind is their similarity with the existing words and also their difference from the existing normal or regular words museum or music room has been turned into music room whole barrow is derived from wheelbarrow and grasshopper from grasshopper but what are the connections now for the interpretation of the deviation the reader has to make a connection between what the real word is what does the real word present or the correct expression present and what is it that has been communicated by making it strange different or unusual if you see the first word that is music room you begin to feel that if the writer has not made use of the existing words like museum or music room what does he want to convey through the word music room now if you separate it from uh, the word room you find muse now muse means to think so maybe he is referring to a room where you would sit relax think like a study room maybe it's neither music room nor a museum or maybe museum is the room where you muse so you think what had been what the life had been earlier what the significance of the objects and artifacts in the museum is so this is what a connection leads us to that muse means to think and when you are in a museum or when you are in a room that is maybe the study room or a room to relax you want to focus on understanding things you want to focus on your comprehension your thoughts similarly the second word whole borrow reminds us that the real word is that we have read uh, wheelbarrow now wheelbarrow is a uh, cart that carries things now whole borrow reveals maybe that everything is borrowed nothing is one's own whole borrow everything has been taken from something so the life is a whole borrow nothing is that belongs to us everything is borrowed from somewhere and it, it would be left where it belongs to we may not carry it along so whole borrow has a whole lot of meaning within a single word you see that the writer has packed a meaning which is deviation and you are not supposed to dismiss these deviations as incorrect expressions or innovations of uh, expression only but these innovations of expression and uh, these violations of rules of grammar and writing reveal a meaning that could not be revealed through the regular use of words the third example that is grace hopper is a violation of the term grasshopper grasshopper is an insect that hops through the gardens on plants and grass and leads his life in a very you can say nonchalant manner so grace hopper is a reference to the you know person who may be maybe uh, a bit lewd or uh, maybe not so um, inact morally upright morally so those who destroy other people's respect repute and uh, damage others they may be referred by the writer as grace hopper so you see in the interpretation of deviation we made we made connections with the authentic authentic word or correct expression and after making that connection we looked at how deviant this expression is from the authentic deviation uh, authentic expression and then we reached to an interpretation more suitable one by referring to the real word and by uh, analyzing it against the newly coined word or the neologism that is here music room whole borrow and grace hopper so the way to interpret deviation is that you first attempt to match the linguistic connection the actually uh, phonological resemblance that you find in the word and the real word 
and between the inverted word and one or more established items of vocabulary. So hold and borrow, grace and hopper, music and broom. Now these are the bends which have been creating the words museum, hall borrow and grace hopper. So this is how even a comical, nonsensical, grammatically incorrect usage that has been intentionally done by the writer becomes a foregrounded feature. If it is a foregrounded feature, then you see whether it is irregular or regular. In this case, or in the case of neologism, or new word coinage, or word blending by James Joyce, it is irregular and it is extraordinary because the purpose of the writer is achieved because he wanted to convey a whole new sense to the reader by associating the word that we know already with something that we thought the words cannot be associated with. So in this case, grasshopper, who has been derived from grasshopper, whole borrow derived from wheelbarrow and museum from museum, they convey a new sense or perception or uh, the way the writer has artfully and uh, deliberately perceived some concepts in life and has presented them or made use of them in his text or in his novel. In our attempt to understand such deviations that occur in literary writing as uh, linguistic deviation which uh, really uh, surprise us or which at uh, the first glance or reading appear incorrect grammatically or uh, in terms of expression we see that the second uh, purpose of uh, the writer or the function that the writer is that he wishes that uh, the linguistic connection uh, of uh, the word will be made outside the language. So perhaps there is something referential between the invented word and the uh, proper existing word. So we map uh, the words. We look at the territory of the word that how much uh, we can expand their meaning and then in the expansion of their meanings we also focus on how can we make associations so museum suggests appropriately enough uh, that a museum is a room where one sits thinks and muses and where, where one goes and finds himself in the history lost in the past and into another world where makes him uh, where he makes uh, connections with his life and the history. So another example that we did earlier was of arthritis that we are familiar with the disease arthritis but the writer said my aunt suffers from terrible arthritis. Now as a reader we firstly may term it as a typing error that the writer has made a mistake instead of saying that his aunt suffers from a terrible disease arthritis he has said authoritis. Now, when we know that linguistic deviations are deliberate and uh, artful, we do not dismiss them as mistakes or errors. There is a design or particular reason of the use. So if a writer, for example, has said that his aunt suffers from terrible authoritis, through the use of this deviant word authoritis, he communicates that his aunt has obsession of writing that is ruining her or like a crippling disease of arthritis the aunt is suffering or is in the habit that is too overpowering and has become an obsession that she cannot really escape from so at this level we see that how we are trying to figure out the importance the meaning as well as the justification of the deviations because such linguistic and artistic literary deviations cannot be dismissed only as errors in typing or grammar they may appear nonsensical but there is a whole lot of sense behind all these deviations which the writers create deliberately and enforce some idea into the mind of the reader through a very refreshing or new way. 
so readers uh, perception of uh, looking at things which appear regular is disturbed by something irregular strange through deviation and then these deviations function as uh, creating a foreground in the text as a reader we would remember these details for far longer a time and within the text as well we will make associations how these deviations connect with the rest of the messages meanings and uh, content in the poem or the text so if such deviations are uh, the kind of important pillars within the text any reader is supposed to observe them with great detail and observation of the details of these deviations means that he will make connections he will draw inferences and those inferences and connections are to be based upon the evidence within the text as well as the outside connections with the correct usage in the text or communication so this leads us to the very understanding of uh, the idea that how deviation can be a hindrance firstly deviation poses a threat or a sort of uncomfortable feeling to the reader he may dismiss it as something that doesn't make sense he may dismiss it something at, as uh, nonsensical uh, something inexplainable or incomprehensible but at the level of its meaning because in stylistics we are dealing with interpretation as we started with the uh, discussion of interpretation in literature and if we are moving forward with the concept of interpretation that led us towards understanding of the concept of foregrounding and later the concept of uh, deviation and uh, then would come parallelism see how these connections are to be made between these concepts that we are doing in the last few lectures we first looked at what is the significance of interpretation in stylistics if a reader is to perform a stylistic analysis he has to develop the skill of interpretation and the interpretation cannot be random it can follow three patterns the first pattern as we looked at was that a reader has to see what is intended by the author secondly a reader has to see what is intended by the text and thirdly a reader sees what makes sense to him on the basis of his previous knowledge so if these are the three levels of interpretation when we as a reader encounter some foregrounded feature the first task with that we do is that we ask ourselves whether it is as a foregrounding a deviant concept or a parallel regular pattern if a reader locates foregrounding in a text in any form either deviation or parallelism then there are certain specific ways of giving meaning to the, those foregrounded features one such specific way is to find out how does it differ from what we know already about the expression and as we understand quite well now that the purpose of literary writing is not only to communicate or to express an idea or give knowledge that we know is the job of journalism a news report or an account of history would give you details of what happened when and how whereas literature is not reporting to you the events the way they happened rather literary writing a poem or a fiction would reveal to you the effect of an event on a person or characters so if an event happened that is the knowledge that is the information which would be the secondary purpose of a literary writing to communicate that is why the subject matter goes to the background and the style the composition the expression comes to the forefront that is why any literary artist makes use of the concept of foregrounding and within that he may choose to deviate the norms 
So if the primary purpose of literary writing is not communication but aesthetic pleasure or innovation in the creativity of art as literary writing is an art, it implies that the process of communication, expression and understanding must be prolonged. It should not be uh, an exercise that is too trivial, short or simple. Because in the concept of deviation, the reader faces difficulty. Firstly, he dismisses a deviation as uh, something incorrect, irregular and abnormal. But the reader of literature is not an ordinary reader. He has been trained and skilled in the understanding of literary writing that it would not be simple and apparent. It would not be usual and regular. So if literary writing is to make the reader go through a complicated process of communication, that is only possible through deviation. So that is why literary artists, poets and writers rely so heavily on the concept of deviation within foregrounding. If any feature in a poem, for example, is to be foregrounded, he may choose a metaphor or a conceit or a graphological or semantic deviation to express it. You have seen in the examples that we have discussed today that how uh, a metaphor becomes a deviation. For example, the tapper being sick, the candle being sick. Candle is a metaphor for the eye. Eye is representing life, years, the animacy or the you know uh, being of a person. So if tapper is sick, it's reference to the fact that life is coming to an end. Then in the examples which were a bit trivial like Grace Hopper or Holborough or uh, the authoritis, we found meaning, we found sense, we found how deliberately the authors created those uh, words either by a connection with an existing word or by the amalgamation or blending of two words. So if such deviations make us feel that these are novelties of expression, these are experimentations with the words and grammatical forms. They do make us feel that these become focus of a text. These become foregrounded features of a text. So this is how the theory of foregrounding encompasses within it the idea of deviation. And deviation means breaking the rules. And it would complicate the process of communication and it would complicate the process of comprehension and understanding of the text and deviation is leading us to interpretation. It is not possible to make sense of a deviation without interpreting it or without putting it beside the regular patterns. So there is always a comparison, there is always a match and you put the deviant patterns of language beside the regular patterns and see how much do they differ from the regular patterns and when you locate that difference from the regular pattern you try to figure out which particular sense does this deviant concept present and how does it fit into the whole frame of the story or the poem and which feelings it conveys on part of the writer and how you as a reader connect with deviation with its understanding with its uh, comprehension uh, of course of meaning. So deviation makes writing interesting and it is deviation that literature depends upon to make itself uh, refreshing and uh, mm, a sort of renewed experience for the reader. Otherwise the readers would get bored if the things are presented simply. The more the complication is uh, enhanced in literary writing through deviations the more force and value literary writings get and then the task of the analyst or a reader becomes tougher because he has to see what is regular and what is irregular what is foregrounded either through deviation or parallelism 
So in our discussion uh, today, we try to understand the significance of uh, the concept of uh, deviation, how it is at a term that comes under foregrounding because it is irregularity, how that irregularity is created, what are the reasons that the poets might use it or the writers might use it. And more importantly, we uh, focused that what a reader is supposed to do when he encounters a deviation. How is he to make sense of it? By interpreting it against the regular patterns or existing normal usage. So our introduction to the concept of deviation today would lead us to the understanding of further functions of uh, deviation as well as uh, certain elements that uh, deviation depends upon. So we will discuss the functions of deviation and uh, its uh, elements in the next lectures with the help of examples of course which would uh, reveal that uh, the concept of deviation is interesting and also it is uh, a very uh, much uh, sort of uh, you know, a pillar on which the literary writings and uh, creative writings stand. So thank you very much for today.